So here's the program we finished up with last time. Remember, it declared LED pin on pin three. It declared an integer variable called time delay, set the LED pin to be an output. And then in the loop section, it went round and round, flashing LED on and off for time delay number of milliseconds, subtracting 100 milliseconds each time. So it flashed faster and faster and faster. Now, this is all well and good, but this loop repeats forever. It's what we call an infinite loop. And sometimes we only want something to happen a certain number of times. So rather than repeating forever, imagine we only wanted the LED to flash on and off 10 times. How would we do it? Well, for starters, we wouldn't be able to put it in the loop section because things that happen in the loop section will happen over and over again forever. So we're gonna paste it into the setup section. And now we're going to learn a new use for variables that allows us to count up to a certain number. And the command for this is for. Inside the brackets, we have three pieces of information. The first piece of information is the name of the variable that we want to use for counting and what its starting value is. So in this case, we're going to have an integer. I'm going to call it counter. And we're going to start it at one. The next piece of information is when should I stop doing this loop? What it actually is, is the information about when should I keep doing the loop? But you'll see in a minute that that tells us when the loop is going to stop. And our condition for continuing the loop is if counter is less than or equal to eight. So this will go from one to eight. And the last bit of information is what I do each time through the loop, how I change the value of counter. We're using a command called counter plus plus. And what that will do is it will add one to the counter each time. I open squiggly brackets. And at the end of the stuff that I only want to happen five times, I close those squiggly brackets. And if I format it, you'll see this is now inside the for loop. So let me walk you through this one stage at a time. The first time that it gets to this command, it starts up a new variable called counter. So it takes an integer box off the bookshelf, writes the name counter on the front of it, and puts the number one in that box. It then runs this section of code. When it's finished running that section of code, it does this, which is, we've already said, adds one to the number in counter. So the number in counter is now two. It then comes back up to here, and compares the value encounter with this end condition. And it says, is the value encounter still less than or equal to eight? Of course, counter is two, and two is less than or equal to eight. So it does this block of code again. When it's done that block of code again, it adds one to the counter again, and it comes back and says, is counter still less than or equal to eight? Well, yes, it is, because counter's now three. So it runs the code again, adds one, counter is four. Four is still less than or equal to eight. So it runs it again, adds one again. Now it's five, that's still less than or equal to eight. Runs it again, adds one, six. Runs it again, adds one, seven. Runs it again, adds one, eight. Now eight is still less than or equal to eight. So it runs it again, then it adds one, and now counter is equal to nine. So when it comes back up here and says, is counter still less than or equal to eight? The answer is no. So it stops running this for loop and it moves on to the next line of code. In this case, there's actually nothing else left in our setup code. And because there's now nothing in our loop code, it will stop doing anything and the program will simply stay going round and round this loop, doing nothing forever. So upload this program and see what happens. 
hopefully you will see that it flashes the LED eight times. That's from one to eight inclusive. And we've still got it so that it increases uh, the speed at which it flashes each time by reducing the delay by 100. So as well as a for loop simply making something happen a set number of times, we can also use the value in the counter variable within the loop itself. Here's an example. This program starts by making all eight LED pins output because we want to use all eight LEDs. It then goes through and one at a time, it turns on each LED for 500 milliseconds before moving on and turning on the next LED for 500 milliseconds and so on through three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it turns on all eight LEDs with 500 millisecond delay in between each one. When it's done that, it then goes through and turns off each LED one at a time with a 500 millisecond delay in between. So the program will turn on all the LEDs one at a time and turn them off one at a time. Now, this program is actually quite straightforward, but it uses a lot of code to achieve its aim. We can dramatically simplify this by making use of the for loop. So what do I do? If I start a for loop, and I create a new integer, let's call it counter one. Uh, started is equal to zero. Uh, then we're going to say stop when you are less than or equal to eight. Sorry, start at one, stop when it's less than or equal to eight and add one each time. So that's exactly the same for loop as we saw previously. And if in that for loop, I add the code pin mode counter comma output, that will make whichever pin is currently stored in counter, it will make that pin an output. So the first time it runs through this for loop, counter one is equal to one. So it will make pin one an output. Second time through, it will be equal to two, so it will make pin two an output. Third time through, it will be three, it makes pin three an output. Fourth time through, pin four an output. Fifth time through, pin five an output. Then pin six an output, pin seven an output, pin eight an output, because that's still less than or equal to eight. Sorry, just making some corrections there. Still less than or equal to eight, but once it tries to make pin nine an output, that is not less than or equal to eight. So it won't make pin nine an output. So this will go through and it will go from pins one to eight and make all of those eight pins an output. In other words, this eight lines of code here has been replaced by this simple three lines of code. So I can get rid of all of that. I'm now gonna do a very similar thing in my loop section. I'm going to start another for loop. I'm going to use a different counter. I'm going to start it as one again. I'm going to add one each time and I'm going to finish when I get to eight. Less than or equal to eight. Counter two plus plus. And this time I'm going to digital write counter to high. So what that will do is it will go through from one to eight and make each pin high in turn. And if I add a delay in that loop of 500 milliseconds, I have replaced all of this code going from one to eight with a delay, digital writing it high. I've replaced that whole lot with just these four lines of code like that. In exactly the same way, I'm going to do a final for loop with counter three. Less than or equal to eight still. Adding one each time. And this time, instead of making the pins high, I'm going to make them low. So my digital right, 
but I'm going to make counter three pin low with a delay of 500 milliseconds in between. And that removes those 16 lines of code and replaces them with just four. So hopefully you can see how the for loop here enables us to dramatically reduce the amount of code that we need when we want to control multiple inputs at once, or indeed at the beginning of our code, if we want to set multiple pins to be outputs.